this is a point um just roughly just thinking about everything that's going on especially with the techno scene there's loads of really weird arguments about race and politics on the dance floor and you know no one's really got the answers but part of the thing that's confusing and annoying about it is coming from a sports background or coming from you know just playing sports following sports for a long time you have this appreciation for the egalitarian nature of sports the fact that it's you know the best man usually wins right um there are some of course there's politics in sports you know there there, there, there is some situations some people can point to where people have been essentially sabotaged right and held back but for the most part you do the work you're talented um you have the right breaks you can essentially get to the pinnacle of the mountain right and it's either you're good or you're not <coughs> It's very black and white. Um, whereas with anything else, especially within the creative fields or entertainment industry, it's very hard to t look somebody in the eye who's black and who doesn't necessarily get the same opportunities as their white campus apart and tell them it's totally nothing to do with race. Even though as much as I would like to tell them it, because I think the whole conversation around race is incredibly boring and doesn't necessarily get at the root of the problem, doesn't necessarily ask the right questions, you can't necessarily be, I can't say with any kind of confidence that it just isn't a race thing. There is some race that plays into it, but sports is not like that. Sports is just black and white, you're good or you're not. But it's also a really interesting part of sports where the redemption arc is amazing. Everyone wants to see, but like sports, especially David Beckham is a good example. Um, you know, David Beckham was a darling of English football at one point, right? Um, this amazing, um, stylish footballer, you know, voice of a little five-year-old, but essentially he dressed really well. He looked amazing. Your mum wanted to bang him. Your sister wanted to bang him. Your school teacher wanted to bang him. Your dad wanted to be him. Your brother wanted to have his haircuts. Um, or your dad was living vicariously for him. Your brother wanted to have his trims. Just a cool dude, right? Married to a Spice Girl. Um, you know, she goes on to launch her fashion brand just in it plays for some of the best clubs in the world in Paris, Milan, Manchester, Madrid, just, uh, you know, LA, just incredible, incredible footballer. But he went through a process where he was, you know, again, the, you know, the apple of the English people's eye. And then suddenly he was, you know, um, banished. But people wanted to see his redemption story. They wanted to see him come back after getting a boot, you know, chucked at his head from Sir Alex Ferguson during his last season with Man United. And this brings me on to the point. Um, this issue with Joe Hart. Joe Hart was a former England number one, a former in Manchester City number one, was once heralded as one of the best keepers in the UK or sometimes in Europe. And he just got recently released by Burnley, right? He went... He went there, I think maybe, I forgot what unsuccessful spell he had. I think it might have been an Italian club before he went to Burnley, but he essentially got let go from Burnley. And that's been a real, real, real um, steep uh, decline in his career. He went from, again, being the number one goalkeeper at Man City, number one goalkeeper in England, to now suddenly being released from Burnley. And now he's without a job. Um, but the beauty of it, the silver lining, is that he's going to have an opportunity to come back again. Right? There's an opportunity for you to redeem yourself. And it's just about whether you're good or not. No politics, no nothing involved. And they kind of touch upon it in this little clip here from Football Daily. Uh, Mark Schwartz, a former Premier League goalkeeper for me with uh, Fulham, sort of touches on it. And I'm going to play the clip for you now. Usually surprised, usually surprised that, that there's been such a fall from, from being the number one goalkeeper at Manchester City to now... You know, not even being offered an extension on his contract at Burnley. That, that, that is a huge surprise to me. Had someone had said that, you know, three, four years ago, five years ago, oh, I think people just would have said, you're mad. You've got no clue. And I think you would have been, I mean, I would have probably agreed with them. Um, so, you know, to, to have fallen from, if you want to say fallen from grace as, as dramatically as he has, that is a huge surprise uh, for me. Um, what he needs to do is go and find somewhere where he's going to be consistent, where he's going to be playing. He's going to be number one. He's going to be almost a little bit out of the limelight and try and find some consistency again. And uh, he needs games under his belt. He needs to try and iron out any of the, the doubts that he may have in his head about his own performance. And that's a weird thing as well, because I, re I relate this a lot to like what's going on with DJing, because I'm thinking about this a lot after reading the Kevin Saunderson article from uh, Billboard, when he's talking about, you know, inclusivity in music and the lack of black representation, all this stuff. There is a part of it where you kind of have to like, you really have to ask yourself the question. It's hard to do so because it's so murky out there. Right? You're not really sure if you're not getting the looks because it's like if you go to a job interview, right? Do you really want to know why you didn't get the job? 
sometimes you know they say i'll oh, get feedback from an interview it's like do you really want the feedback though especially the, depending on what kind of feedback they give you but sometimes if they if they want to be honest and want to be brutally honest and give you so you know and they adhere to the radical honesty mantra then that's good but if they're just going to extend pleasantries about you know you not saying a certain experience thing that you had in your cv or whatever maybe you're not using a certain you know fucking phrase that's not really helpful but if they were really helpful and tried to actually tell you why you didn't get the job like you know pinpointing things about your personality about your experience about the places that you were at maybe the feedback they got from other members of the team that you worked with in previous jobs that probably would be do a lot of harm than good because no one actually wants to know the real truth but sports is brilliant like that because you're constantly being given harsh truths harsh realities you're having to face up your body just not reacting or operating the same way that you'd like it to right your physical ability is just diminishing over time um um, the current state of football just changing, right? The the things people want just moving a different way. I think Joe Hart's suffering from that. He was a goalkeeper who was really um, um, heralded for his shot-stopping ability, but then it got to a point where shot-stopping wasn't enough for goalkeepers. You had to be able to control the ball, be able to play the ball out from the back, be able to come out and be commanding in the box, which he was never what's that guy. Um, there's loads of things that just that are out of your control that you just have to kind of evolve or adapt to. <clears throat> Or unfortunately, sorry about that. Unfortunately, you just wither away and die. And I think that's part of the issue that's happening now at the moment with the inclusivity conversation in techno or in electronic music. There is a part of it where there's, there's, there. I'm not denying that there probably is some sort of systemic issues at play that are not allowing certain people from certain demographics to progress and get further in their career or within the scene. But there also has to be a really honest conversation about how we assess each other's skills especially in comparison especially when you compare people from different backgrounds with different skill sets from different network groups whatever it may be that's been an honest conversation around that because i don't think it's as easy as just saying oh because i'm black and that person's white and they were in the game for five years and i was we, we, they were both in the same game for five years experience wise learning how to dj how come she pays a burger and i don't it's not just about race there's more questions there there's more things that has to be said right i even i've had a lot of those kind of reflective moments of myself when it came to um having to hang up the whole promotion uh promotion no promoter sort of like cool guy hat that i had when i was in dawson that was part of my i tired the identity anyone that knows me for that time knows that i was very proud of the amount of nonsense i got up to on any given weekend in dawson right kings and road and the alibi and all these other pubs i went to down there right most of the other by actually but i was proud of that identity i had right i wore it like a badge of honor right putting on nights that's so special for like four years was, was you know, one of the highlights of my life and introduced me to a whole bevy of people who i kind of you know who i really hold close to my heart and, and you know exposed me to different parts of the creative industry as well that allowed me to have the career that i have now at the moment so it's been amazing but i had to have a honest conversation with myself when it kind of was made clear that I wasn't necessarily getting the same opportunities and the same chances to put on nights or to DJ in certain places. And I couldn't, I couldn't honestly tell myself it was racism because it clearly wasn't because it was other people getting booked the same, you know, um, who were from the same background as I was. It was just a, a case of, you know, your time now has come, right? You have to make room for others. Like the the bar owner had to prioritize um, making sure his bar would survive the inevitable fall off that most sort of like seminal, um, you know, seminal sort of bars to go through right mud club i can think of had the same thing studio 54 had this falling up every sort of like seminal you know hole in the wall club dance floor place has a bit of a fall off right where they have to sort of reinvent themselves and you don't do that with the old guard you have to have to introduce some new blood in there so if you get dashed to one side you have to have your own conversation about yourself and or really come to a realization that you might not be cool anymore you might not be what they want in that scene it's a bit of an ego dent right it's gonna bruise your ego it's a bit of a gut punch but that's exactly what's going on you can't ascribe that to racism and you have to kind of change tack then you know you have to re evolve like madonna has done right throughout her entire career you have to kind of evolve with the time every decade or maybe less than, than a decade you have to kind of change your sound change your appearance change your artistic direction whatever it may be just so you can survive and i think sports teaches you that you have no other option right unless you evolve you will essentially be put out to pasture and i think it's gonna be interesting to see what joe hart does um on the other side of this right because essentially he's been he's been he keeps getting messages from the industry or from the you know yeah from the industry that he's not 
at the current level that they would like, right? He, they want a goalkeeper that offers a lot more than shot stopping. And he has to just do that. He has to get better at distributing the ball with his feet, get better at commanding his box, get better at just being an, as a, a, I don't know, a deep lining sweeper for his team, whatever it may be. He has to just do that or he won't be able to, or he won't get hired again, or he won't be um, a priority, the number one goalkeeper pick for another team, a professional team anywhere for the most part. I just thought it's interesting just to kind of observe, isn't it? How cutthroat and how black and white it is in sports, but also how humane it is also because there's the door's always open. As long as you're good, as long as you're able to prove that you're good, you can come back in again. Um, so, yeah.